<laughs> Welcome everybody to Garbage Twigs <laughs> Bird of the Day. I'm joined by Archie today. And uh, Hello. If you, and uh, Archie is a hummingbird. Now specifically Archie is a ruby-throated hummingbird. But I already did that. I already did the bird. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not doing the ruby-throated hummingbird. But Archie is a very green bird and a very green hummingbird. Mm -hmm. So I decided to do the shining green hummingbird. Oh, look at that little cutie. You got a picture of my cousin. Yeah. Aww. Look at look at his tiny little feet. Look at his tiny little <laughs> feet. So cute little feet. Oh man. They they are so delicate. Have you ever had a hummingbird yeah. perch on your finger? I have not. Uh but it'd be so oh. cool. It's, yeah. It it is. It is very, very cool. It's they so they cool. hum in your ears like a mofo, but Oh my god, yeah, hummingbird hums. I mean I've had I've had one buzz my head before. It's just like ah. Oh, <laughs> Um, I actually, uh, I was wearing a floral pattern shirt once and one like flew up and was like looking at my shirt and I was like, wait a minute, something's wrong here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're not the brightest bird in the bunch. No, that's for sure. Brightest. Uh, hummingbirds, we love them, but, uh, in terms of bird intelligence, I gotta say they're not too high up there. Well, let's learn a little bit about them. The shining mm -hmm. green hummingbird. God damn it. I knew I forgot something. All right. They're three and a half to 3.7 inches long, which their wingspans are a little bit bigger than that. It's about a five inch wingspan. Little, little wings, little wings. Um, <laughs> but these guys, they don't weigh much. Like no. 0 0.13 to 0 <laughs> 0.14 ounce. Not pound, mm. ounce. <laughs> they uh, they don't weigh much. Um, and I uh, the lifespan, I, was, I remember I didn't have that and I was looking it up and trying to find it and never actually found it. Now, other hummingbirds have lifespans between three to five years. So mm -hmm. we can imagine it's probably in that area. I know that's like the the uh, the ruby-throateds. And these guys are pretty similar to ruby-throateds in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. Biggest difference is where you're going to find them. Uh, ruby-throateds are a North American one. But as you see, these guys, they are kind of only on the northwestern tip of South America. Um uh, mostly in Colombia, but also a little bit in Western Venezuela there, as you can see. Yeah. Um, so Apodiformes is the order, and the tra Trochilidae is the family that is all hummingbirds. All yeah, hummingbirds are in the family. Or Trochilidae. Yeah. yeah. That's actually what my last name is based off of. Trochilidae. Trochilidae. Yeah. I prefer Tequila Day. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. And uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce the genus and species. Doesn't matter. We, only nerds like me care about taxonomy. But, hey, <laughs> they're in the hummingbird family. I, That's all you need to know. I like taxonomy. Are, are you calling great. me a nerd? Oh, Yay, someone else who likes taxonomy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, these little guys, they're going to do their nesting in uh, trees. And they make these small, tiny little cup nests on a branch. Um mm -hmm. When it's time for mating season, the male is going to do kind of a mating dance, uh, but they're typically going to, they do it in places that have a lot of flowers. So it's like, come here, baby. Look at these flowers. Now look at me dance in front of the flowers. And whoever does the best dances in front of the best flowers gets to uh, mate. And then Next after time. copulation occurs, the male says, bye, and is gone. <laughs> And uh, uh, so then the female lays two eggs and she does all the incubating, all mm -hmm. the nest building, and all the chick rearing. Uh, the males don't do shit. They, they breed and they fuck off. Because that's... Because, <laughs> um, well, male hummingbirds... Um, I mean, no, no offense to you, Archie, but uh, mm -hmm. you're all deadbeat dads. Literally every one of you. Don't even pay child support. Come on. I mean, to be fair, I am I, I'm part human now, so I, I've okay, left that behind okay, me. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm a very monogamous <laughs> bird person. <laughs> All uh, right, good, good. Um, <laughs> the breeding season is between October and March. Um, sometimes you'll usually only do one clutch, but sometimes they'll do two if things work out right, and so that can work out for them. And uh, the thing is, it's just like, oh, they're in South America, but you notice that they're not in an area that is Amazon forest. Uh, mm -hmm. They actually prefer more lightly wooded areas or something that's kind of like on the edge of a forested area rather than actually in deep, thick forest. 
That's where, that's where you're okay. going to find most of them hanging out. I think most of the reason for that is they want to be near flowers, and flowers just don't do as well in heavy tree canopy. Yeah, that would make sense. So they like to be up in trees for their uh, mating and their safety, but they still want to be near where the flowers is at. Because mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. turns out these little guys are hungry little guys. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. So um, the uh, diet is almost all nectar from flowers. Uh, mm -hmm. But that only makes up about like 90% of their diet. They do actually eat some other small, like maybe some seeds or stuff. But they also will eat small insects, uh, in particular yeah. small flying insects. They uh, do hawking. And hawking is a bird technique of hunting in which you catch the, bur the uh, insect in midair. So they don't yes. like they don't like eat them off the branches or you know off the ground or anything like that. They will just fly around and be like, "Ooh, mosquito, nom! Oh, oh. little flying fly, yep. nom! <laughs> Do that." So yeah, actually skilled little flying hunters, but uh, they still prefer the nectar from the flowers. That's that's their main thing. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you, oh, what you say? Uh, I I just had a little quick thing to say about this. Uh, did you know? that uh some hummingbirds actually have like serrated teeth on their beak i did not know that yeah and you would teeth. think it would be to oh like if they have a serrated little beak it's to better uh like catch the insects with right uh -huh. no no the reason they have serrated beaks is so that they can more easily like if there's another hummingbird in front of a flower they can just like yoink them right away from it and be all competitive like that. Yeah, I believe that. Hummingbirds are, and you know, they are very territorial. They are very mm -hmm. territorial. They are like especially when it comes to food. Yeah, yeah. They do not want another hummingbird in their flower. It's like this is my flower. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are. They're actually kind of nasty little guys. <laughs> <laughs> they Just kind because of they're are. small, they're like uh, they got like Chihuahua syndrome, you know. Yeah, pretty much. So, uh, yeah. just just to make sure that we're all clear, uh, please. Never, ever touch my snacks. Yeah, ever. don't touch his snacks. Don't touch my snacks either. Mm -mm. Now, mm. you look at the colors on them, and these guys, very, very pretty feathers. Um, mm -hmm. But their feathers do not have any pigmentation. No. It is all due to iridescence. Their, their feathers are completely iridescent, and you get that brilliant green light, but that may be green in this angle, or more blue from this angle, or even black from certain angles. And you can yeah. kind of see kind of the whole range of those colors in uh, in that picture there. Like, all of those feathers are pretty much the same in terms of their color. And it's just, yeah. they look different depending on the way the light is hitting it and reflecting it. That is just so damn cool. Uh-huh. And if you look at it under a microscope, I'm pretty sure... It's actually more of like a, a hollow white to it, or like it's it's really clear inside. Yeah, but yeah, it has like so much refraction going on that it just looks green and blue yeah. and stuff. Yeah, the structure happens to reflect the green and blue parts of the spectrum without actually being green or blue. It's it's very cool. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Now, these little guys, they're kind of a symbol of luck in Andean culture. Uh, they symbolize luck, energy, and joy. There's not a whole lot of folklore around them, but, uh, you know, it's just kind of, they're just kind of a little symbol for, oh, uh, yeah, good little things. I mean, little green bird is lucky. Sounds, sounds <laughs> right to me. Yeah. And, of course, you know, all hummingbirds just have a lot of super interesting things about them, like hummingbirds having incredibly fast heart rates, uh, at Whoa. full energy, can get up to 1,200 beats per minute. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, they're one of the only birds that can, like, hover, and all, the only bird that can fly backwards. Mm -hmm. Like, that's mm -hmm. that's pretty crazy. Um, they have fewer feathers of any type of bird. Um, just in total, of no, total number of feathers. And uh, their little feet and legs are so small and weak... They are incapable of walking or hopping. They can only perch and maybe do like a couple little scoots sideways along a perch. But yeah, their little feet's kind of useless for anything other than just doing a little perch. <laughs> oh. I mean, that is where the name Apodiformes comes from. 
is like without feet. So yeah. them and swifts, like when they're in the air, it's just really hard to see their feet because they're just all like small. Yeah, their feet are pretty tucked in when they're in flight. You, I mean, this picture, you can see his little feet pretty easy, but yeah, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's not the only time is when they're perched. And uh, mm -hmm. a nice little positive thing at the end there is that their populations have been stable or growing in certain regions, so they are a species of least concern on the uh, endangered species list. So they're doing, they're doing just fine. That's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, well, what are my thoughts? Uh, I mean, come on, can't go wrong with a little hummingbird. They're just cute little mm -hmm. guys, even though they're terrible fathers and they're jerks and territorial. And, uh, but, but I still love them. I still, cause, cause he's just a cute little Yay. guy. He's just a cute little <laughs> okay. guy. He's a cute little It guy. is. It is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, obviously, Archie, you, you love the uh, hummingbird because he's, well, he's a hummingbird. He's like you. He's like your little South American <laughs> yes. cousin. Ah, yeah. I mean, I've I've grown up with hummingbirds. They've always been a favorite of mine to like check in on with the feeders and all that. And I'm actually really, really thankful to live in an area that, weirdly enough, has hummingbirds year round. Yay. So it's cool. Well, I mean, I feel like a hummingbird is just one of those birds where if you see one, almost everybody is going to be like, oh, a hummingbird. And it's just going right, to be excitement. Right? Yeah, it's seeing a hummingbird is an exciting thing. Mm -hmm. Seeing a sparrow is like, oh, just a sparrow. <laughs> I guess you know, in a way, yeah. You know, sparrows are the most widespread species of animal on the planet. And mm -hmm. uh, they're invasive almost everywhere. So I yeah. want to declare, so it's like, you know, we've got a flamboyance of flamingos, a murder of crows. Uh, I think that a group of sparrows should from henceforth be called an invasion. <laughs> an invasion of sparrows. I don't if know if there I'm is not a mistaken. Is there a collective term huh? for a group of hummingbirds? I th there are a couple. I think one of them that pops up in my head there is like a, a jewel or something. A jewel of huh. hummingbirds. Something like that. Apparently, I can actually look it up real quick. Apparently, there's the three most collective nouns for hummingbirds are a bouquet, a shimmer, and a charm. Ah, a shimmer. That's the one I was thinking of. Yeah, a shimmer. But they are called the gems of the sky. That's that's where they I got are. that. From. I mean, they're they are shiny, iridescent, reflective. Yeah. Tonight is a tonight is a hummingbird. I like that. Uh, has oh, fun. All right. Well, we're going to call this bird of the day done, and we've got one more segment to do. So let's, uh, let's right. get this done. 